Hallelujah. We're going to take it home. Jesus. Your thoughts define me. Yeah. You're inside of me. Just begin to worship right where you are. Forget about who's next to you because this time is personal. This time is personal. See, I need to worship for myself this time. Hallelujah. Hands lifted all over the building. God, we love you. God, we need you. We lift our hands in surrender. And we tell you, have your way in this service, oh God. Speak through the man of God. Yeah. Speak through him, God. Say whatever it is you want to say, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't stop worshiping God. Don't stop worshiping God. Hallelujah. We thank God this morning. Thank God for being our Father, our Abba Father. Hallelujah. As they say in the old church, next we're coming up to a part everyone can participate in. Amen. We're about to worship God with our giving. Amen. Bless the man of God as he comes to render uh, offering. Bless the Lord, O oh, my soul. Bless his holy name. You may do so at this time. I mean, we appreciate we thank you, Gil. Thank you. Yeah. 
come on, just a little bit more. God, as you go through this world calling and blessing, Master, please don't pass me by. The broken hearts, those that are going through moments of stress, anxiety, please don't pass them by. The mentally ill, the sick, don't pass them, Lord. Have mercy, for your grace is sufficient. You know the need of every individual loss. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Mm. Bless, oh, Lord. We can't make it without you. Oh, Jesus, bless you. Don't pass us by, Lord, please. Thank you, Father, those who have sowed the seeds, those who have given in their tithes and their offering. We pray a special blessing upon them that you may bless them for they are doing the work that you have called them to do. And we give you all the honor and all the glory. Bless their hands. Bless their going and their coming. Bless them, O Lord, that they may be a blessing unto the ministry of Christ. In your holy and righteous name we pray. Amen. And amen. Mm. When they begin to sing that song, that just, that just, I just love them old hymns. I'm sorry. <laughs> Lord, do not pass me by. Mm. Let me be seated. Isn't God good? Amen. If you would, we're going to talk today to you just a few minutes. And uh, <clears throat> the let's see if we can handle this well. We're going to be doing some pretty soon some orientation class in class that for the church. That we may understand more about the order of God. We, the order of God is very important. And the order of God is not how we feel or what we think. The order of God is what God says. And that is his order. We want to talk to you just for a few minutes about consider your ways in first in the book of Haggai the Bible tells us about consider our ways you, you know I want you to, to
to, uh, to look at something in the first chapter of the book of Haggai, if, if, if I had a reader with me. I don't see Sister Dana here with me today. In the book of Genesis 126, I want you to notice something there. I know you say, boy, he, he'd really be taking us fast. In the book of Genesis, the first chapter and the 26th verse, would you read that for me? God said, mm-hmm. let us take things in our way. Uh-oh, okay. After our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, mm-hmm. and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Mm-hmm. Okay. God said. Read that again for me. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, mm-hmm. and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, okay. and over the cattle, mm-hmm. and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Okay. And God said, let us make man. And then he said, let them have power to rule. We have to understand. And and, 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 in the book of Haggai 1 and 5, read that. Yeah, I, I get it. And now therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts, consider thy ways. Get that. Listen to what he said. Now therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts, consider thy ways. Take a good look at how you live it and think about it. Take a good look how you live it and think about it. In the book of Genesis, we just got the reading that, that the Bible says to us that God created male and female, and God gave them and told them, them, meaning the man and the woman, uh, this may shock some of you, that the man and the woman was to rule over then that means that the woman has just as much right to rule as the man has a right to rule. It does not put him above him. What is God saying? That he gave them power. And what God is trying to make us understand, God is saying that I have given male and female authority and power to rule. And God is saying, since I have given male and female power to rule, I want you to be able to work together and consider your ways in the church and in the life of God. It means that the woman has power to rule and walk in certain positions as well as the man. It does not know. But the problem is, we do not follow the order, hear what I'm saying, of God. The order of God is what separates who has the right to rule over what. It is, it is God's order that give us who is in authority at a certain time. So then, the woman is just as equal right to rule the house as the man is, but the man is in authority of head of the house. Do you hear what I'm saying? He, so, so what is God trying to tell us? We are living in a world today that we need to stop and consider our ways, the way we live in. 
We're living in a world where everybody do what they want to do and they think is right is right. We're living in a world that can come up with a new name and we everybody want to get on board with it. We doing such and such a thing now and everybody how, well, see, this is a new thing. And, and, and I'm always being told stuff like, see, Pastor, you just old. Yes, I'm old and thank God for it. I thank God that I'm old, and I thank God allowed me to get this. So, so you got to get where I'm at. I'm, I, I, I soon be 72. You got to get to 72. And I pray to God you in the shape that I'm in in 72. I think I'm in good shape. I ain't feel dead yet. So, so, but, but I feel like I'm in good shape. But so you have to get there. And, 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 and on your journey there, you know, this one thing I learned in life, I used to always sit around older people. I always listened to them talk and, and things they would do because they had some wise stuff, man. They, they, I would listen to them. They, they'd be talking some good stuff. I hear them talking about stuff about saving money and doing different stuff, and, 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 and it made me stop to thinking. I looked at some of them, they were living pretty good. So they must have knew something. So I, I listened to them. Don't sometimes sit around older people and listen to what older people are trying to tell you and, and get don't don't just be all just hooked up with all the young people because most of the young people you hooked up with is hooked up with crazy stuff. They're hooked up with all kind of wild stuff. And, 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 and they'll make you separate from the way that God has for you if you don't be careful. You know what, we, we get so that, 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 that God wants every last one of us in this church, every last one of you in this church is valuable to this church. Do you know that? Every last one of you has something to offer this church. Every last one of you have something. God does not put a man and a woman in the house unless they have value for the house. That woman is just the important. There are some things that sometimes that help me have to tell the husband, I look, look, that's just wrong. Sometimes my wife had to tell me, why you want to do that? I don't know, babe. I just, I, I, I don't know. She had to kind of get me checking. But when you won't listen to your wife and your wife just get, I don't say nothing to him. I just let the nutty be nutty. I don't say a word because that's just the way he is. You're going to have problems because God did not give you that help me when he just told you in the uh, 126, that you are to rule male and female. He gave y'all powers to rule. And when God gave, so my wife have as much right as I have. Ooh, we pastor, you talking different today. My wife have much right as I have. It's just that I have some authority that she don't have. And the authority I have is the authority that God has given me. In this church, the deacons have a lot of rights. The trustees have rights, but I'm the pastor. I have some say so. And then the final decision, guess what? I can't say, well, I never would have did that, but the deacons can call me to fail. No, 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 no. Deacons can't call me to fail. They can give me some good suggestions. They need to have their input. I need to talk with them. Why? Because they are put in position to rule. It doesn't mean they run the church. Do you hear what I'm trying to get you? I'm trying to get you somewhere. But there is an order to follow. And the order that we must follow is the order that God wants us to follow. It's the order that separates who's who. It's not the individual. So man, yes, you are the head, but that doesn't mean that you rule everything. Sometimes women are single and they have to rule the house by themselves. And they are ruler over the kids. Those kids have been put in by God, something in them to cause them want to rule too. We're going to read some stuff in a minute. That what happens when things are out of order, what happens to you? When things are out of order with God, everything falls apart. You know, we're living in a society today where people, kids can wake up, little kids, and say, I don't want to go to Sunday school. And most churches have stopped having Sunday school classes because kids don't want to go. And mom and dad say they don't want to go to Sunday school. But yet and still you put them in that dancing in their little tutus. And they don't want to dance in their little tutus. But you say, you going to dancing. You going to dancing. Yeah, you going to dance. 
and you make them go to dancing. But when it comes down to the things of God, you don't make them do it because really you don't want to be bothered with them getting up, getting ready for Sunday school in the morning. And we make things here at this church as easy as possible for you to get your kids. You don't have to dress them up in the shiny little shoes and the little suit tie. We say, come as you are. We are more concerned about your heart than we are about your dressing. We ask the women to dress modest and that you don't come in here uh, uh, just naked. But if you just, uh, all you got is a, a, a two-piece uh, bathing suit and that's all you got, well, come on in. Come on in. And the only problem we're going to have with is the men who's not saved. The saved men is not going to have a problem with it. It's not going to bother them. But there are some unsaved men. They ain't going to be able to hear the message if you come in a two-bedroom. Uh, you know. <clears throat> Tell you like this old man. One time, it was two old men sitting down. <laughs> I'm going to get back to the message. It was two old men sitting down. These young ladies walked by, pants cut up to here. Little old halt the top on. The young men, they looked at them, they come by and said, mm -hmm. My goodness. The old man looked at them and said, Look at them nasty things. Coming through here just nasty as they could be. And he looked over there at his garden. He said, Isn't them some beautiful tomatoes? Mm hmm. You see, when you start getting older, you see things different. Things that once looked good, now looking nasty. And things now, <laughs> you, your eyes are changing. And the reason it don't look like it used to, because you can't do what you used to do with, to it, so now it don't look right to you. You don't want to see it no more, because it brings back what you can't do. And that's why things look bad to you. That's why people clothes bother you, because you can't do what you used to do. And, and you old folks need to stop that. Bothering these young folks, you, I'm coming with you old folks. Y'all need to stop doing that like these kids are so bad. No, they see like you used to see. You just ain't got old. What, now it look nasty to you. It ain't nasty. Your eyes changing. You're getting a little wisdom about yourself, and you're scared. Come on. Now watch this. In the book of Isaiah 3, 10 and 13, would you read that for me? Three, ten through 13. Now, this scripture is talking about things being out of order. Now watch it and read it and listen at what it's saying. Read it again. Say ye to the righteous. Now, to the righteous, those who live in on the past and the way God want them to live and obeying the will of God. Go ahead. That it shall be well with you. Things are going to be well with you. If you're living like God wants you to live, I know it may be rough. He said, but stay on that path. Do it like God wanted it done, and you're going to be blessed. Go ahead. For they shall eat the fruit of their doing. So the, the, all that you labor for, you're going to get a chance to enjoy it. God said, hang in there. You're going to be blessed. Go ahead. To the now, those that are wicked, not doing right, 
it shall be ill for him. For the reward of his sake shall be given him. Because you're going to go through a whole lot. A lot of people suffer what they suffer because they're out of the will of God. Now, let's watch what the scriptures are getting ready to say. Go ahead. And for, my people, for my people, the Christian folks, the Christian people, listen to what he's saying. Go ahead. Children of the oppressed. The children have been to oppress, have begun to oppress the parents. The children have begun to oppress the family. Families, you, you have some family who was just as happy as they could be, and then the children start growing up, and they say, Lord, these children, I'm telling you what, the house is, I'm getting some, I don't know. These kids just keep an uproar in this house. Why are they keep an uproar in the house? Because it's out of order. You have allowed the kids to start running the house. They have started running you. It's out of order. Go ahead. And women rule over them. And the women are ruled over the men. Uh oh. The man said, You know what we need to do, sweetheart? We don't need to get in debt for that new car. We can't never get a new car when I want it. My God, you have just, look, look, look. Just go get, let's go get the car. And the man know it's not good to go get in debt for the car right now. And he goes and get the car because the woman's ruling. And you, you know what they say? A happy wife, a happy home. The biggest lie ever told. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Happy wife, happy life. Yeah, happy wife, happy life. Happy, that's the biggest lie ever told. A temporarily happy wife come on, come on now. can get you in a whole lot of trouble. Amen. Now, she can be happy today. Because you're doing what she say do. But oh, tomorrow, when what you, she told you to do, that you knew better than do, have got y'all in financial bind. She's looking at you now. Well, what we going to do? You the man of the house. Oh, all at once, you have become the man of the house, and you need to do something. Now you the man of the house. But to get you in debt, she was running the house. And now that you listened to her and got in debt, now she's ready to give you your authority back. And she's not responsible. You are. You allowed her to step in a place of time of ruling that you should have been ruling. But the happy wife, happy life, you made her happy for a moment, and your life going to be upside down for a while. Because now you got to fix what you let her make you mess up. I'm going to tell you this. I, I tell this story all the time. Years ago, my wife told me one time, we say, let's take the kids on a vacation trip. I probably have told you all this a hundred times. And I'm going to tell it again, because somebody didn't get it. And she said, let's take the kids on a vacation trip. And I said, well, sweetheart, you know we got the light bill and stuff to pay. We wasn't making very much money. We were struggling. Y'all know what struggling means, huh? You know, you know, when you're trying to make ends meet and you're pretty much living from payday to payday, and that's the way we was living. Well, we weren't even living from payday to payday. We were living from I don't know what it was, but we, we was just barely making it through. And I said, well, and she, and, and, and she began to, she, she, she got in the rulership. She starts telling me, she say, you know what? Everybody take the kids on vacation. Everybody, da, da, da. we never, I said, okay, okay, okay. Let's go on vacation. So we went way to Fort Worth. Florida. 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 No, no, not that one. That, that's, that's, that's when you got, that's when you get uh, 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 Mickey Mouse all our garage money. She say, we went, we, we went all the way to Fort Worth. I remember that. And we mowed the little bumper cars. Yeah, I know I'm right. I know I'm right. I went, yeah. See that? See, that's what I'm saying. See, when they want to run something, it, it, see what I just got to tell you. See? See, man, that's when you have to hold your ground and say, I'm right. Now she had to come back. Oh, you're right. I knew I was right. That's why I kept talking. Now, now <laughs> and here she was. And she told me, say, 
And while we went, boy, did we have a good time. Boy, we rode stuff, me and the boys, and we just had a ball, and we ate. And we come back, and they sent the light bill, this little pink slip. And she said, you see the light bill? I said, yeah, we got to. No, we ain't got to do nothing. I don't know if you're going to have to work some overtime or what you got to do, but you need to pay it. I said, well, sweetheart, we just went to, well, you knew we couldn't afford to go while you went. It was the greatest lesson of my life. It was the greatest lesson of my life. From that day to this one, I learned to say, we ain't doing it. She taught me a great lesson. I listened to her. I thought she was on my side when the bills come due. When the bills come due, I was ahead of the house. When I say, no, let's not go to Florida, I mean, to, to, to the trip, Fort Worth, she was in ruling, and she was having a fit, and I wanted a happy wife with a happy life, and I went, and come back, and they were ready to cut our lights off. We made it through, because I became the man after that. I'm talking about the man to run the house. I become that man, and I, that was one of the greatest lessons God taught me through my wife. To be good to her, but when man, when you know you sit in authority to say yes or no, you must sit in that position to say no. God is the head of the man, and there's a time when God said to you, no matter how much you want it and how much you want to do it, God said you can fast. You can see some people want to fast and make God change. No, no, no. Fasting is not going to make God change a no that's good for you. You can stop eating for three weeks that they have to feed you through a tube. And you still, he's not going to change something that's going to hurt you. He's a God that blesses you. So you're not going to make him change by doing that. Why? Because he is the head of our life, and he's going to do what's best for us. And when he's going to do what's best for us, no matter how you feel, this is what is the plan of God. God set man ahead in the head. Even though he said woman to rule also, the woman has a place underneath the man and the, be a helpmate to him, or she's ruling when she's single. When a woman is single, she rules the house. It's not the kids ruling the house. And see, some women say, when I'm single, but you got kids, I guarantee you they try to take authority. Some way or another, they try to run the house. Kids will tell you, well, I'm, as soon as I get old enough, I'm moving out. Well, you old enough, move today. But I want you to know one thing when you leave, you're welcome to come back. And when you come back, the rule's going to be the same. It ain't going to change. It's the same rule. You can move out today and come back. The same rule that was written is still written. Now, if you want to come back, you welcome back. But you come back just like it was when you left. You changed. I didn't. And that's the way God is. You can walk away from God because he won't do what you want to do or because he's saying something in the word you don't agree the way. God saying, you want to leave, leave me. But I guarantee you when you come back, the word going to still be the same. It's not going to change. It's the word of God, Okay. We're going to do a real good breakdown about leadership when we get into the leadership program. In the book of Haggai, the first chapter, fourth verse, 4 through 11, listen at this, listen at this. One and four? Yes. Okay, he said, you're dwelling in your houses, you're living good, you done bought this mansion that you're struggling to pay for, and, and, and you enjoy. You, 
When people get ready to do buy homes and stuff, do you even consider when you, the Bible said count the cost, do you even count what you ought to be giving to God into can you afford it? Most of the time, a lot of people don't. They count that out. They say, well, you know, if I quit putting money in church, I can afford this house. It may be the biggest time for you not to be able to afford the house because what was blessing you, you're getting ready to cut it off to do something that may put you in a jam. When you're going to need God the most, you're cutting him off. Go ahead. It is time for you, O oh, you, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste. He said, listen, you, you, you put everything you got into your house. You know, my wife and I, man, my, I have to talk about my wife. That's not the life I got. <laughs> my wife loved to decorate the house. You know, I come in. I got all these blue flowers over the house, all this decoration. House looks beautiful. I go, and next week I come in, nothing blue. I got a garage, and Brother Rick would testify, but I got a garage with, 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 with three or four shells of decoration. Just decoration. Money, money, money just stacks of it, that she can turn the house gold, blue, silver. Just, I, I, I built a big garage to have room for my cars and stuff, and I got flowers. Just boxes of them. Because she loved doing that. But I have to give her credit for this. She loved giving to God. If this church say that every, we asking everybody to give $1,000, I promise you, my wife gonna come up with $1,000. She gonna do it. She gonna do it. Why? Now, she do not neglect herself and things she like doing. She does not never neglect God. I get to give, let, can, can, I, can I be truthful with you from the pulpit? My wife better about giving to God than I am. Ooh, you say that's, ooh, pastor. No, the truth is the truth. My wife would have no problem with God telling her, say, give 50% of what all the money y'all have. She say, well, the Lord say, do it, let's do it. I say, you sure you heard God? <laughs> you say, God say, do it. You sure that was God talking? Well, let's pray again. Let me hear him. My wife would not would hesitate to say that's what God said, do, let's do it. She's better about giving to God than I am. See, a lot of men, preachers won't admit that to you. I'm truthful with you. I really want to be straight and truthful with you. I love giving God. I make sure I, I give God what God required me to give to him. And I'll bless even if we get, with seed offering and special offering, I'll bless God. And I have no problem doing it. But sometimes... You, you have to understand, it's my wife that pushes me to do a whole lot of things. She'll tell me, you know the church needs this and that, and I'm like, would you just shut up? You're not even a deacon. <laughs> but what she say is right. What is she saying? I have the right to rule. I have the right to tell you some things. The house needs this done, and you need to do this done. Do You need to do, why? She has that right. The Bible say he made the man and the woman to rule. It's just that you have an authority in your position that causes you to say yes and no. But he, she has that right. So that's what happens in the church. There's a lot of people have rights. I'm ready to hit you with something. A lot of people have rights, and we don't want them to do it. Many churches that feel like the woman cannot minister the word of God. You can't find that in the Bible where she can. The Bible say your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and they shall prophesy out of the light. That means they will minister the word of God. They will speak the word of God. And people say, I don't believe in women ministers. It doesn't matter about what you believe. What does the word of God say? And if the word of God says it, tell me this. If you had a child that was lost on the street, and a woman go to minister to them and bring them to Christ, would you have a problem with that? Oh, they can minister when you want them to minister. 
But when you don't want them to minister, you don't want them ministering. You have people in many churches. We don't want the woman coming up here ministering the word of God. She can't, she can't come up here. Now you have a woman who's living for Christ, praying, fasting, living for God, walking as holy as she possibly can walk, and you say she's not worthy to come up here and speak. But then you can let a man running for office, for mayor, say he want to stop by and speak at your church. Uh, we have what's my brother so-and-so coming in. He's running for mayor, smelling like alcohol because he was at the deal last night. And you say, well, come on up here and have a word. You come on up here. Now, it's okay for that alcoholic rascal to come up here and the whole church... And soon you put a woman up, I don't believe in women getting up there. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it something strange? Yeah. You, it's bothering you because she's a woman. And where you got that from? Because you heard. None of you studied the Bible, not some a lot of you do. None of you studied the Bible enough to know whether she has a right or not. The Bible just says she has a right to rule. She has a right. When we go through orientation, I want to show you in Scripture a woman has the right to minister the word of God. A woman has a right to be a deacon. I'll show you a doctor was a deacon of the church. She was a deacon of, of, of the church. You say, hey, got a woman deacon over there. Well, study your Bible. Quit talking. You, you're just going by what you heard. Your grandpa and your great-grandfather, half of them, they couldn't read, no how. They was going by what they heard because most of them couldn't read. And they were not in the plan of God, they was in the plan of man. We have built religion off of what we think and how we feel. I'm saying the church, if it's going to be blessed like God wants to, we have to consider our ways, and we have to set the church according to the way God have the church set. And the way God have the church set is the way the church is. And, and whether we like it or not, there's something God does, and I'm saying, God, why? And God's saying, because this is what I want. Father, if that's what you want, hey, guess what? That's what I want, and we're going to make it happen. That's the life that you have to live if you want to be blessed by God. You don't have to do it, but I'm telling you what you do if you really want God's blessing. You have to follow truth. Now, according to the word of God, yes, a woman can minister. Have no problem with it. But I can show you clearly in Scripture, and we can go through it in our rotation, she cannot, should not pastor. The Scriptures say that a man should not exalt herself above the man. You cannot be a pastor without exalting yourself over the congregation. Uh-oh. She can minister, but pastor... Now, in many churches, that'll tear a church up. But the first thing the woman will say, you're going to tell me I can't pass. You can get mad as you want to get. It does not matter. It won't change God. It won't change the word. The word of God is true. Here's the path we must change as Christians. We must walk the path of truth, which is the word of God. If the word of God says wrong, guess what? It's wrong. If the God, word of God says we can't do it, we can't do it. We can do it, but we're not going to be blessed for doing it. The Bible said that when one is not walking in the will of God, the blessings will not follow. This church has been tremendously blessed. Even during COVID, we never missed a beat. Do you know how many? Come on, keep, read, keep reading for me. Watch this. Verse 4. Listen, God's saying, when you don't consider your ways, you're going to find yourself working and working hard, and you bring in very little. You, nothing seemed to be rotten. You're not prospering. God wants you to prosper. God wants you to be blessed. And if you work it and God blessing you for something coming into your house and you're not prospering, it's something out of order. And God's saying, if you fix it, I'm going to bless you. Read verse 13. Then spake Haggai, the Lord's messenger, in the Lord's message unto the people, saying, I am with you, saith the Lord. 
No, God said, I'm with you. Notice something. God told them, I'm with you when you do what I tell you to do. When you do not do what I say to do, I am not with you. I'm only with you when you obey me. I'm with you. Don't fool yourself. When you obey God, God is with you. The second chapter and third verse. Second chapter, third verse. Who is left among you that saw this house in her first row? And how do you see it now? Now, in other words, which one of you are old enough to remember the churches the way they used to be? And how do you see the churches now? How much have the churches changed? Was that once a holiness in the church and now it's gone? Was that now, once that was a place where people walked in and, 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 and honor and worship God and now it's gone? Did, was that a time when people sang old hymns and old hymns moved the whole congregation? Did you ever notice that the, a lot of the old hymns that we, we used to sing and when you sing them, now watch this, and I'm not doing a racial thing, I just want you to get it. When we sing old hymns, and you get into old hymns, you watch the people, most of the people, all the people in the church, in the black church are singing. They're all into it. Jesus, keep me near the cross. The one we just sung, all of them into it. Watch this. If you go to white churches, they're not into it. You go to the white churches, and they sang praise him. The whole church is into it. And you say, why are they all into it? I'm going to tell you why they're all into you. Because most white people have something to praise God about. They don't know anything about the heavy burdens that blacks carry. They don't know about you crying, God keep me near the cross. Pass me not, Savior. When blacks have been crying and said, Lord, please don't pass us by. Lord, please don't let everybody else prosper and we not prosper. You feel and understand them songs as a black person. The white man is saying, I, he ain't passed me down. I got a store. I'm the, I'm the president of the company. All my kids got good jobs. Uh, why are they singing that song? You get him into praise song, he said, thank you, Jesus. You've been so good. Wave your hand. So you've been. Because he is not burdened. Hear what I'm telling you. He's never felt the burden that you felt. He never felt the thing that you're going through. And here's what happened to us. When God blesses us with good educations and we get good jobs and we move in positions, we want to move with him because we want to say, praise him. And there's nothing wrong with it. We should learn how to praise and worship God because we say when praises go up, blessings come down. I'm not telling you not to praise and worship God. Hear what I'm trying to tell you. But there is a reason why that old gospel songs affect the blight's people more than it does another race because it is a past that we have traveled through. And don't fool yourself, you're still traveling through that past. You're not getting the fair promotions on the job that you ought to get. You're not being looked at like you ought to look at. You're still saying, pass me not, O gentle Savior. You're still saying, God, give me the right to have the promotion. God, give me the right not to be misused, talked about on the job. And that, that, that. You're still saying, Lord, pass me not. When he's still saying, God's so good. Because he got the promotion without a fight. He got the position that you trained him for that he was able to get. So he praising God. And you still asking not to pass you by. Do you hear what I'm trying to tell you? Do we have to understand we live in a real world. You can try to fit yourself in with people that you don't fit with if you want to. I got enough money to go fit in with any church I want to go to. 
but I know that's not where I belong. I belong against my people who are going through what I went through to try to get where God has brought me. Oh, you don't hear what I'm trying to tell you. That's where I belong. Because we are still suffering. We want to act like we, we get one thing better than the other, and we want to act like everything good with us. Everything is not good with us. Yeah. Our teachers at the school not being tra- treated like the other teachers. They're not being treated like the other teachers. The people on the job, and we're not getting a promotion. Because most of the people that make the promotions is not us. So we're still crying out to God. And there's nothing wrong with crying out to God. We got to get our breakthrough. We got to get our breakthrough. And the only way we're going to get our breakthrough, we need God fighting our battle. And the only way he's going to fight our battle, we got to set our life in order. We got to recognize who is in charge of what and respect those that's in charge. How do you expect for anybody to respect us when we won't respect ourselves? How can you expect, man, God to respect you on your job when you disrespect your wife? God just got through saying in Scripture, you reap what you sow. You're going to reap it. When you learn how to respect your wife and honor your wife and lift her up, God said, I'll respect you, honor you, and lift you up. When the kids learn to honor their mother and their father, God's saying, I will bless you, children, and, and, and that I will bless you that they, the world will honor you. It's the past. It's the how. That's why Jesus said in his word, he said, he always obey his father. I always do what my father want me to do. Always. Why? And that's why he was blessed like he was. He said, I always obey my father. And there was a time that he didn't want to do what his father told him to do. But he did it anyway. Why? Because daddy say do it. He even went to his dad and said, can this not be moved? Can you not move this bitter cup? And his father tell him, say, no, I'm not going to move it. He said, well, so let it be. What did he say? Dad's in charge. Dad says he's not going to move it. I don't have to do it, but if I don't do it, the blessing that's going to come is not going to come. Let me let read this, and then we're going to be, we're going to be done. I've got to do this quickly. Because I know church folks, you can't take too much of their time. This is, not, this is not a football game. Yeah. Go ahead, on, Brother Rick. What, what verse are you at? Okay, read, read on down. We're going to move fast. Is it like your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Verse 4. Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, and let the Lord. Mm-hmm. And be strong, O Joshua, son of Josephus, the highest priest. And be strong, all you people of the land, saith the Lord. And work, for I am with you. According to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remained among you. Now, now God, God said He brought you through a lot, and His spirit remained. You, you know what? I hate to. I've been wanting us to see stuff, and I hate to keep going back to stuff. But when the Bible brought them out of Egypt, now listen to me, good. He warned them. When you get over, because he said, you're going to make it over. Do not become like the Egyptians are. Remember him telling them that in the Bible? He said, don't become like the Egyptians are. He told them, say, remember where you come from. Okay? Now here's, here, here's what pastor's going to upset you. When you get good education and you get good jobs, Remember where you came from. Remember where you come from. You don't have to get like those other people. You hear what I'm telling you? You don't have to get like that. 
It's nothing wrong with moving in a better neighborhood. Don't get me wrong. If you can move in a better neighborhood, I understand that. It's nothing wrong with taking your kids to a better, but you don't have to get like those people. You don't have to, you don't have to have three, four wheelers and pulling a boat up in the yard. And now you done got just like them, you got 20 credit cards. Because see, everything you see people, see I used to think when people had all them four wheelers and them boats and all that stuff, I used to think, I said, well, them people got some money. Them people in debt. But here's the difference. They can get in debt, I'm, I'm just talking earth tea. They can get in debt and get away with it. You get in debt, they burden you. You hear what I'm telling you? They can get in debt and they work with them. You get in debt, they want their money. And they're going to take everything you got if you don't give them money. So you can't get like them. You got to be wiser. You got to be wise enough that you can get in debt but you can pay yours off when you get ready because you have done what God told you to save. Do you hear what I'm telling you? You say, I can go get a boat. And now I can talk to them crazy when I go get my boat. I want that boat. Well, the interest rate, I'm not paying you that kind of interest. I like to have the boat, man. But see, when you're broke, you can't do that. You got to say, well, that's what the interest rate is. Like I, I went to this dealer, and the guy say, I say, I'm looking for this Lincoln I want to buy. Uh, he say, use a new, I say, new. He brings me outside, and he tells me, uh, Mr. Henderson, come over here. I said, I thought the new was over there. Yeah, but I'm going I'm I'm to carry you over here where I can, something I can put you in. Oh, that was wrong to tell me that. You gonna take me over here. I say, first of all, let me get something. Because I had on my old dirty clothes. My boots was all crooked over. <laughs> and uh, so he looking at me. I'm gonna come over here, Mr. Henderson. And say, I'm gonna show you one I might can put you in. I said, I told you I want a new one. I said, you have any idea what one costs? I said, no, but you're going to tell me. I said, okay, let me get something straight with you right now. I said, if I wanted three of those new cars over there, I'll write a check for it. He looking at me like, Amen. I said, I'll tell you what, I don't want you to sell me nothing. We went to what, Heflin? We went to Heflin Ford, walked in there. The guy treated me like I was somebody. I bought the car, paid cash for it, drove it back over there to him. And I say, now go get your, what, your where your manager? His manager come out, I said, I come over here to buy this car from you. That boy right there, that's, I'm getting nasty now, God forgive me. <laughs> I said, that boy right there told me he's going to put me in one of them used cars. I said, I don't need you to put me in nothing, I just need you to sell me what I come to buy. You understand, boy, when I look, he was talking to, I said, now I just paid cash for this one. Uh -huh. And when I look, he was talking to, I, go, <laughs> I said, yeah, he's looking for a job now. <laughs> you know, that's how we are treated. Yeah. He didn't know whether I could or who I was. He just looked at me yeah. and figured, I'm going to put you, I'm going to try to help you. I don't want you to try to help me, man. I wouldn't be here if I couldn't do it. I don't need your help. I'm here telling you what I want you to do. And my wife get on me all the time when I go into store because I walk in authority that of God. I walk into stores, I have a problem telling the people who I want or go get me the manager. And she said, Lord, here we go again. <laughs> because, let me tell you something. I go to work, I used to go to work six, seven days a week 12 to 16 hours a day, and I did it for years. I worked hard for my money. I done what those people told me to do to make that money. 
I kissed who I had to kiss to get that money. Amen. And you think I'm going to walk into your business and I'm going to give it to you and you're not going to do what I want you to do? Ain't going to happen. You're going to do what I want you to do like I want you to do it like I did to get the money. Amen. And you're going to have to do what I want you to do like I want you to do to get my money. The same price I, pay, price I paid to get it is the price you're going to pay to get it from me. It's not asking for too much. I'm just saying you do what I respected those people to get the money, and you're going to respect me to get it from me. And I gave them the best of deals I can give them to make that money, and you're going to give me the best of deal. I just went in and bought some clothes, and I told the man, I want socks to match everything I got. I want, he said, well, Mr. Henry, socks this much. I said, I ain't saying I'm buying no socks. I said, I want socks to match everything. Mr. Henderson, you know how much them socks cost a pair? I don't care what they cost. Okay, I tell you what, hang all that stuff back up. <laughs> Take all of it, put it back on your shelf, and hang it back up. What, what you doing? I said, you can't give me them socks. I don't want nothing you got. He said, well, this pair, this, this socks right here match that, and, and I'm going to give you two pairs, because this one and this go with that. And when I had that, I had a big stack of socks. Yeah. Why? Because I'm telling him, you got to understand something, sir. You, you, you understand, you're talking to a child of God, you need my business. And I know you can afford to bless me, because I'm getting ready to bless your store. We're going to bless each other, if you let me. Or I'll go to another store and bless that store that's going to bless me. Why? Because I'm a child of God, and you're not going to treat me any kind of way. My wife says, most of the time I go to the store, my wife, work, uh, when I say where the manager, she, she eases off like she my wife. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, where are you going, sweetheart? Mm -mm. <laughs> I know that look on your face. Yeah, he can't talk to me like this. I told her the other day, I'll go travel with you, but don't tell me to give people tips. Uh, just don't do it. Make me mad. I love to tip high school students that's working. I love to tip them. But these old cab drivers, talking language that I can't understand, don't like me, and holding his hand out for a tip, thank you. I ain't getting you a dime. Why would I bless you to hate me more? I don't know. Maybe I think different. I think different. Maybe something wrong with me. I don't do it. I told her, I said, if I don't give a tip, you got to understand, I didn't appreciate what they did. Yeah. Right. You come to my table, and you go to everybody else's table, and you change the juice and you everything, and I'm still sitting here waiting, and then you think I'm going to leave you a tip. you lucky I pay for the food. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Come on, we're going to read this. What I'm trying to tell you, we as the children of God need to stop the way we're doing stuff and quit trying to fit in with people. Quit trying to make people be your friend. They disrespect us because we're begging to be a part of them. I'm not begging to be a part of nobody. If you don't like me, guess what? whip it do. I'm not going to change for you. I'm not going to try to fit in with you. It's not going to happen. We just about done. We just about done. What scripture you have, Brother Rick? Well, I can move this real quick. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. You want me to go to verse 6? That's all. Verse 5. Okay. No. Re re read 2 Corinthians. 2nd, I mean, it's not 2 Corinthians. That's uh, Haggai, the second chapter. No, we ain't gonna read all that because these, these people, these people, see, we can't we can't read all that because because these these are football players. And football players, you know, if they if they not if they not shouting for their team, they, they you're taking too much time. So so we got here's what God's saying to us today. Listen, consider your ways. Consider the way you're living. 
think very hard about the way you're living. You don't get to the point where ever, ever, listen to me, church, never get to the point that you think because God bless you, you're better than somebody else. Just because I'm making minimum wages at McDonald's and you got a great job at the plant making $30, $40 an hour, $50 an hour, don't, don't, don't belittle me or think you're better than me. You are blessed because I assure you if somebody don't want you there, you're there because God has opened a door for you. And you're there because God is blessing you. Don't look down on me that I'm something less than you are. You are just highly favored <clears throat> by God and put in there. If some of you, listen, listen, some of you, God has blessed you with bringing minds that you can, that there's some people that don't even, they can glance over something and go take a test and just pass the test. You're smart people. And you got some people like me, we just hard to get it out the books. It's hard for us to get it out the book. And, and, and it does not mean you're smarter than me. It means you learn better. Because I guarantee you, there are some things, it's hard for me to get out the book, but there's a lot of things that I can do that you can't do. I bet you can't build a house. I bet you can't put the plumbing in the house. I bet you can't. It's a whole lot of stuff I can do. I bet you can't do. Everybody has something they're good at. You just got to find out what they're good at. And when they're good, good at it, you'll find out they're blessing. Every last one of us got something special to offer to each other. Our school teachers are great people, very intelligent people, have learned how to teach and learned how to expound to our kids. You ought to honor them for that. Amen. You're not a teacher. You're not going to ever be a teacher. Your grammar is bad. Your math is bad and everything else. But you are important to God, and you're important to the church, and you can give good advice. So you're somebody. Always look up and understand that you are somebody, and God's saying that you need to learn how to bless with what you got in you. We have to learn to set everything in order. Everybody in here is important to God. We need you. We, if we're going to get where God wants us to go, we need you. You need us. I sit in people in positions right now. Listen to me. They're sitting in position. My wife, a very intelligent woman. The church, uh, uh, Sister Mouton, very intelligent woman. Sister Swan, they're very intelligent. Man, we got Brother Rick, very, very, I mean, these are, these are, I, I put smart people around me. So when you ain't smart, get smart people. And everybody think you're smart because you got all those smart people with you. That's what they're doing to you on them jobs. They put all the smart people around them, make you think they know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. I used to talk about our engineer department. I say, man, y'all done done four years of college and y'all dummies. They used to get so mad with me, and I say, I can go there and tell you exactly what your problem is, tell you why your unit's shutting down, and tell you what you got to do. And I would tell them, they'd work on it, work on it, they would, I'd tell them, and they say, well, let's try that, and it worked. Then they come back, how do you know that? Because I'm smart. <laughs> you ever been to college or something? Nope. I got the gift of God. Yeah. And God has blessed me with a special gift. <clears throat> I just can see and know things. We got those gifted people around us. Quit counting people out. Because we need them. Amen. There's a place for them. And they're a blessing to us. If you got 10 kids and all of them doctors and lawyers and you got one, just seeing that they can't get it, doesn't mean there's something wrong with that kid. That kid might be the most intelligent kid in your house. It's just something you got you to figure out how to put him in his place and how him to help him get where he need to get. Because if all your kids got all that smart gift, that, that kid got something. And everybody is telling, make, trying to make that kid think he got a problem and he's a dummy, he's a this, he ain't, he's not. Like I tell you, I'm a very intelligent man. 
have become very successful listening to God. One of the greatest things to do, you'll find this out. This is why Jesus did it. When Jesus went and got ready to minister to the people, he did not go up there and get all those theologians. He did not go get all the smart people that were studying the scriptures. He went down there and got some dumb fishermen. Yep. He went down there and got the fishermen and said, y'all come go with me. Why? Because you're dumb enough to listen to God. You're dumb enough to get what I got to say because everybody else is going to try to reason it out. Now, God said this, but according to this, I, I just can't see. Now, you remember when Locust said back in 19, 20-something year, uh, see that they try to figure out. The dummy say, I hear you, God, and I believe you. And that's why he's become very successful. He learns how to hear God. Don't count nobody out. Don't. I'm not saying people with education can't hear God. Y'all got a great gift that we need. Y'all blessing to us. But those who don't have those doctors or master's degrees, don't count us out. Don't count us out. We're here for a reason. Used to say a long time ago, they used to say on a job, we need people that can put fixed pipe and we need people that can build scaffolds. We need people. We also need some people that can dig the ditch to put the pipe in. Because all this we do, if we don't have a ditch digger, we're going to never get it done. Because all the pipe fitters don't want to dig the ditch. So we got to have. So we are like we are because every last one of us need each other. God bless you. There's a plan for your life. Consider your ways. Consider what you're getting into. Consider God needs you. We have baptism to do. Will y'all will y'all hang with me just long enough to baptize these kids? I know. I, act like we're at the football game. Just just say, just say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, I need to change my shirt. Get the candidates. I just need to change my shirt. Y'all let me change my shirt real quick, please. 